aftermath of the credit crisis of 2008, scores of books have been written about what happened and how to prevent it. My guest today, Peter Schiff of Europe Pacific Capital, has a new book out as well. It's called How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. Uh, and Peter, compared to many of the other books that have been out there, which seem very serious, this, this is actually looks like it's fun to read. You have cartoons in here. This is a little bit different style I think people mm -hmm. expect coming from you. Why, why did you take this route? Well, the whole idea is to present economics in a very uh, simple uh, terms that everybody can understand. In fact, it's so simple that even congressmen <laughs> could probably understand it if they read it. It's too bad they don't pass these books out there. They'd save a lot of time and money on these hearings. But, you know, I wrote my book about the financial crash, my serious crash book, proof. before it happened, right? right? right. So I, 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 I wasn't Monday morning quarterbacking the financial crisis. I laid it out, you know, in, in no uncertain terms, uh, you know, before it happened. So what I want to do is follow up with an explanation that would make a lot of sense to a lot of people. It wasn't written for an investor. My first book was written from the point of view of, okay, we're going to have this major financial crisis. The real estate bubble is going to burst. The economy is going to collapse. The dollar is going to fall. How do I plan for that? How do I rearrange my portfolio so that when this crisis ends, and believe me, it's far from over, right. that, that, that my wealth is intact? This is not written for investors. This is written for anybody who wants to understand government, the economy, how it works, and why we're in such a mess. And I think that if you understand this and read this little book and grasp its concepts, which are not too hard, you might know more about economics than many people who have PhDs in economics, including some people who have won Nobel Prizes in economics right. and who sit in very high places of power in Washington, like on the Council of Economic Advisors or at the Federal Reserve. Right. Well, uh, we recently had Maria Bartiromo on, and she doesn't have a PhD in economics that I know about. She has a book that's also, I think, out there for the average the layperson on the street. And she was here last week, and she said that she thinks that that boom and bust cycles are, are actually good. Would, would, do you agree with that? I mean, would, in this book, you talk about why an no. economy crashes, but what's your response to that? Well, they're not good. I mean, what's bad is an artificial boom. You see, in a normal economy, you pretty much have a constant boom. It's not like, you know, it's up, upward slope. It's not, you know, but what happens is the government comes in and interferes, distorts the market, introduces cheap credit, and creates malinvestments. It creates overinvestment. It, it, it causes people to do foolish things. It causes businesses to misjudge the real amount of savings in, in, in society. And it causes them to fund capital investments that really aren't warranted given the true uh, savings and, and consumption patterns in the economy. So there's a misallocation and, of capital. Right, right, and it happens during the boom. It's, you figure it, you know, George Bush talked about, you know, Wall Street got drunk, right? Yeah, they were drunk on cheap credit supplied by the Fed, and while they were drunk, they did stupid things, like dot-com stocks, or like buying these structured products full of, you know, you know junk, you know, Toxic subprime mortgage mortgages, right? right? And so the problem is during the boom, when all the politicians and everybody loves it, everybody's getting rich on dot-com stocks or everybody's getting rich on, on condo flipping, that is the problem. That's where the bad investments are made. When the bust happens, that's the free market's way of correcting the economy for all the mistakes that were made during the boom. So the recession, the bust, that's actually the good part. That's the cleansing part. That is the withdrawal, right, where you can, you can get those toxins out of your system. Unfortunately, politicians hate the bust. Right. They hate the recession. They always want to stimulate the economy so that we prevent the market from doing its function. And what they do is cr you know, create a bigger problem. Like when this Na NASDAQ bubble burst, instead of allowing the bust to happen, they stimulated it. The stimulus is what caused... The, the housing, housing bubble. Right. So fast forward to today. We had the housing bust. The Fed cut rates to zero. Yes. And they're meeting this week. And I, you've been very critical of them. And there's a character in this book, Ben Barnacle, <laughs> a thinly uh, disguised reference to Ben Bernanke. I'm assuming you don't have much faith that the Fed is going to be able to execute this exit no, strategy we keep hearing about. There is no exit strategy. They just talk about it. But, it, you know, it, it's like the Roach Motel of monetary policy. You can, <laughs> you know, you can get in, but you can't get out. They're repeating all the same mistakes of the, the Greenspan, Greenspan Fed. You know, we're, we're, we're blowing up a bigger bubble now than the NASDAQ bubble or the stock market bubble. Unfortunately, it's a government bubble. All the new money that the Fed is creating is going to expand government. Government has now grown enormously. The federal government is now spending 
almost $4 trillion a year. If you look at the fiscal 11 budget, that's more than twice what it spent 10 years ago. Uh, you know, so whereas at least we got some value out of the NASDAQ bubble and the housing bubble, we get no value out of the government bubble. In fact, we get negative value because more government agencies, more government programs that we don't need are going to impoverish the country. And siphoning productive capital from Main Street and Wall Street to, to Washington is going to undermine our economy further. And when this government bubble bursts, when the rest of the world doesn't want to buy our treasury bonds anymore or our mortgage-backed securities, because they figure out, you know, the real right. tragedy is America, not, not, not Greece, uh, that's when that whole thing comes tumbling down. Meantime, instead of addressing our economic imbalances right now like we should be, we're making them worse. All right, Peter, we got to leave it there. Thanks. Yeah.